welcome back. Um, so we uh, um, arrive nicely at concert number two of the evening. Um, and this is the moment where we get to hear um, the piano works of the first year um, uh, stylistic composition module, first year students on stylistic composition module. Uh, so uh, just a, a little bit about um, what there is here, I suppose. Uh, it might be helpful. So um, the first year students have been working with me on this module and each week we look at um, a different composer or a different kind of genre of music and the idea is that composers um, learn about the, the, the techniques of uh, specific composers in history. In this concert what you're going to hear um, is a selection of works that the composers, um, a selection of works inspired by the, the uh, works of Debussy and Ravel in their evocation of Spain. Um, each of the composers has dealt with um, something to do with Spanish music, essentially, um, and they're going to give you more detail about that. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce um, our, um, our pianist, Emanuele Morata. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and just to say that our composers are really fortunate enough um, through the duration of this module, or in some instances in the module, uh, to work with um, Emanuele on their pieces. Uh, he workshopped the music, he discussed um, the, the, the techniques that they use, not just the stylistic uh, technique, but also uh, the pianistic techniques. Um, so this is kind of the, yeah, the developed iteration of, of their music. So thank you, Emanuele, and let's have our first composer up here. Hi, my name is Summer. Again, um, the piece is uh, going to be played is called the rich, uh, the bass and the rich. So the song is combination of the two parts. So first part is a bass, second part is a rich. So first part is called uh, is with one main theme and two variations. The second part is a long theme. So please enjoy.
Hello again. So this next piece is um, based on a photograph of the Alhambra uh, Palace in Spain and um, incorporates different devices that we learned in class, uh, such as um, guitar-like gestures like arpeggios and, um, and uh, the habanera rhythm. And it's, this basic core of the, the piece is the Andalusian cadence, which is a descending uh, minor progression. Um, yeah, and I hope the music speaks for itself. So uh, enjoy.
and the piece I've composed is called Stepping Into the Unknown. Um, I've composed this piece in region mode and I try to explore this mode by using some devices like quills, gestural writing, some syncopated and habanero rhythm. And there are of course so many unexpected and strange things happening in this piece, which is why I have named it Stepping, Stepping Into the Unknown. So that, sounded um, unknown to me and I didn't I didn't know where it should go and some things are very unknown unexpected happening in this piece so glad that our pieces are selected for this festival and thank you so much I hope you like it
Hi, I'm Darshan. Uh, my piece is Un Torno Español, which means a Spanish twist. Uh, it tries to capture the essence of Spanish tradition and cultures, and it imagines the lively and bold street performances of Spain and conveys emotional depth of the Spanish musical heritage. Uh, it's an Eve region and it has some guitar gestures, which I like to do. Uh, hope you enjoy.
women and men dancing each other and usually K is famous for the dancing music and I was thinking about the girl that dress the red color of the red dress and men suits well for the dancing music and the story story is the when you first meet dating <laughs> It's very deep is falling in the deepest love and but in the middle part of the story they broke up <laughs> and really like sad sad and teardrops gonna happen and you know the fairy tale ends with a happy ending story so finally they meet each other and really happy and ever <laughs> yeah so it's really the music
students, that was awesome. So thank you so, so much. I hope you are proud too. Okay, welcome back. Now, um, this is the final live acoustic act uh, before the final uh, film projection. Uh, a, f a few months ago, I, I went to one of the lunchtime concerts in Vestry Hall, uh, and I found these two guys, uh, Yanis Matteo Grillo and percussionist Ricardo Fabio, performing a graphic score by Cornelius Cardio. Um, Ricardo wants to introduce Cardio in a moment, so I won't say much, but Cardio is probably one of those uh, uh, composers that wrote some of the most abstract uh, graphic scores. Um, and I thought this, this is a perfect platform for a little compos composers performers collaboration. And therefore, uh, we got uh, two uh, composition students, uh, Maya over there and Megan over there, to write two new graphic scores for this very unusual duo. It's unusual because it's uh, 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 difficult to find pieces for piano and, 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 and percussions. In fact, this is uh, a sort of flexible percussion set. Uh, it's not, uh, particularly the cardio piece uh, does not require specific instruments specific percussions, no specific instruments. It's a, it's a flexible score. Um, uh, in the program, uh, uh, you'll see that uh, there's also John Cage, John Cage mentioned, but uh, they won't be performing uh, a piece by Cage. Uh, the, the running order here will be uh, uh, Cardio first, uh, then uh, Maya Pavel, and, uh, and then finally uh, Megan Russell. They'll be introducing uh, their respective pieces, but important point, we will be projecting these graphic scores so that everybody can 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 follow them. Uh, yes. So thank you. Uh, yeah, like Simone said, we are going to perform Cornelius Cardius Treaties. It's a piece. It's a graphic score. It's composed by 197 pages. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to perform all of them. <laughs> We're going to perform just the first seven. Uh, like Simone said, uh, Cornelius Cardi was a composer who wrote uh, really abstract parts. And he was a graphic designer as well. He studied with Stockhausen. And he came up with this amazing work, which we had to do for one of our modules. And so we looked at that and we said, oh, that would be cool to do to do a weird set with percussions and, and piano. Uh, our practice was unusual as well because we just looked at the pages and we thought, what can we express with this kind of stuff? So what, what do we want to communicate? And we came up with the idea of a storm, which is interesting because Maya's piece is called Storm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting that we all came up with the same kind of thoughts. And we thought about, well, when, when we're going to have, when we see the graphic score, we thought about the storm because it's very stormy and it's very graphically intricated. Uh, but there's a line that goes throughout the whole 197 pages. So we thought about when, you know, there's a storm outside and you're kind of inside in your house and that's your kind of line. And then you see outside all of these things happening and sometimes sometimes are interesting sometimes are scary sometimes are reassuring so you know we're trying to put that thought into music um one thing that matteo asked me to tell you is that <laughs> the piece is going to be very atonal so you brace yourself and you know expect to hear something really different from the usual
Next piece, we're going to have uh, Maya join us to do a little explanation first on her side of things, and then uh, we'll talk about our approach to it. Hi, I'm Maya, um, and I compose the next piece. It's called Storm. Um, it's a very much inspired by the piece you've just heard, this piece quite similar. Um, I composed it just by putting on headphones and listening to the audio of the storm and all of the shapes and stuff were just things that I saw um, based on what I heard. Like Kaju's piece, there's a line going throughout it, but for me this represented the skyline and just everything else going on around me. Um, it's completely up to um, both Picardi and Mateo's interpretation, so I'll let them explain what they think. Yes, so when, when we approach this, um, it's because of the like, similarity of Picardi with the line going through. Um, we found it ironic how the title of this piece is Storm. And we thought, huh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> the previous one we just did, we had the idea of the storm. So we, we came together and we had this idea of, well, it's titled Storm, but let's think of it as a different angle. It uses different shapes. Maya's created these lovely, wonderful shapes that flow and... Um, uh, and we saw things that were like, hold on, these are like bubbles. And so we thought, what would be, what would it be like or sound like under the ocean of a storm? So we thought, we'll take a different approach. We'll take a more tonal approach this time. But this time it's the idea that the storm is above. And although the ocean is ferocious on top, underneath it, there's some sort of tranquilness and calm sense to it and that's what we felt when we um, played this.
Megan Russell. I have gone for a slightly less abstract approach to a graphic score. Um, I was inspired by Terry Riley's piece In the Sea, in which the musicians are presented with a number of cells um, that they can repeat uh, any number of times and basically do what they want with them. So I have given these two um, the same sort of idea, but it was suggested this morning that we do this as a trio, um, which is why I'm not in concert dress, because I didn't have time to go home. Um, but I am also playing in this one, so I'm going to grab a music stand and, and go stand there. <laughs> I should also mention that this piece is called Kaleidoscope um, and it plays with the idea of uh, planes of refraction um, and this idea that things converge and then sort of split apart again and it also has the potential to be bitonal so that could be interesting. Uh, hope you enjoy. <laughs> 